and welcome back to another episode of Collision Repair Mag's Industry Insider. I'm your host, Allison Rogers. We're here today with Tim Morgan, the COO of Spinezy Americas. We're going to be talking communication today, which seems like a pretty basic idea. We all know how to talk, exchange ideas, but there's actually a lot of moving parts to communication, especially in the collision center where you're servicing someone that's probably not having the best of days if they're through your doors. So, um, Tim, let's just dive right into the questions right away. Uh, We've got a lot to talk about. So just off the bat, what do you think that collision centers most overlook when it comes to communicating with customers? Well, there's so many forms of communication that are out there. I mean, just within our own business, when we're pre-qualifying a potential lead from a customer, we ask them how they want us to communicate with them directly. Some people want to be communicated through a phone call. Some people want an email. Some people just want a simple text message. They're too busy to come to the phone, but they have the ability to be able to text. We also, in our own company, uh, use an interactive live service from our, our webpage. Um, and even off the desktop of our our measuring system that they can communicate with us. But there's a lot more that goes into communication than just directly talking to to the customer about their current needs. You also need to be looking at how do I get out uh, in the industry so the people on the street driving the cars when they get an accident know they need to call my shop in order to be able to get a, a quality repair. So we have to look at, you know, our, our social media uh, blends of how we're getting information out to the customer. Also, and I'm, I'm sure we can break that down further, but there's just so many different methods today to be able to go from. Mm-hmm. There are so many different ways to communicate with the customer in 2022. I mean, just off the top of the head, email, um, instant messaging, texting, uh, or you can even phone them with an update. There are so many different ways to talk to your customer. Like, Age demographics also play a role. Um, If someone's young, maybe they prefer to get their messages via text, instant messenger, so you know they're not having to take some time out of their day to get a phone call. Whereas uh, the loyal Miss Smith, who's been taking her car to you every time it gets dinged up in the past 25 years, she might prefer to get an actual phone call from the shop to give an update on the the car. So how do you figure out on a case-by-case basis what method of communication to use with your customer? Well, I I, I think uh, like uh, one of my customers, for instance, does... um, 80% of his business is Tesla. And when I was talking with him, he said, there's not a Tesla customer that wants to talk on the phone. Every single Tesla customer says, just text me, just text me. Um, And so he's had to to change his business model of how they're able to be able to text from their computers directly with the customer because it's not always him working from a telephone. Um, So using a voice over internet uh, type uh, service that he has the ability to be able to text his customers. It amazes me how we've evolved, and especially over the past two years with everything that's happening, there's a lot more communication out there um, that's not face to face anymore. Um, so we need to we need to look at different avenues of how to be able to do that. I think the first thing you need to look at in your business is how to be able to attract the customer. Um, you have repeat customers you're always going to have, but if you need your business to grow. We need to be able to attract customers. So you need to look at the demographics in your market area of um, what's out there and what's happening when it comes to communication. In certain market areas, it could even be a a billboard or a maybe even a short television commercial or a radio commercial. You need to look at what's strong with the media in your marketplace. Mm -hmm. Communication comes down to more than just dealing with the customer that's physically in front of you right now or the car whose car you're touching right now. It comes down to, you know, retaining new customers, dealing with your parts vendors, your material suppliers, et cetera. There's so many different people that you communicate with on a day-to-day basis, just in everyday life. But why, when it comes to the customer, the person whose car you're fixing one-on-one, why is it important delivering an update? Why is this so integral to a functional collision repair business? Well, I think part of the problem that we're experiencing right now with the supply chain shortage, um, you have uh, parts delays, material delays. Um, which is taking the the repair process to be longer. Um, There could be delayed wait times before you can take the customer's vehicle. And you need to still be in contact with that customer so they don't go down to XYZ Body Shop and and see if they can get something done faster. It's not like today that you can take the keys from everyone's car and fill up your backyard because you have to have the labor source to be able to facilitate the repairs. I have several shops. Um, I was on the phone with a shop owner last night and he was talking about how he's booked through May already. And it's, you know, we're just coming into March 
And I was like, how do you balance that? And how do you know um, exactly what's happening? And he said, we have to stay in contact with the customer. We update them, you know, every two, three days of where they're at in the process. And if some, someone drops out of line, um, then they are told, uh, the next person's told that, and, and so forth, that they're moved up on the list. They've even had to do a balancing act of how many vehicles they take in per day. Pretty easy way to be able to do that would be to calculate what your average repair is, um, what your repair, average repair hours you can put out from your current uh, staff that you have, and then come up with an average of how many cars can I take in in a day and how many are going to deliver per day to be able to do that balancing act. But communication with the customer to keep them um, involved Um as you said, the their lack of experience of what to do in an accident dealing with the body shop makes it you the expert to communicate with them on, on you know where they're at in the repair process, or even down to uh, when there's some negotiations with the insurance companies to be able to keep them informed of what's being negotiated about their repair process. All right. So with customer communication established, important, we get it. How transparent is too transparent? We're obviously dealing with challenging times. There are part shortages. Um, You see CBC posting articles of people complaining their car's been in the repair shop for three months. They've gone to complain to the media because the shop hasn't kept them informed. How transparent is too transparent? Can you tell the customer sitting in your waiting room that you frankly don't know when the part's going to come in? Or what can you tell them? Let us know, Tim. How much can you let them in on? Well, I know in my own business, I'm very transparent. Uh, we make sure the customer, you know, knows everything that's going on and, you know, throughout the whole purchase, um, and the installation and the training and then the support going forward. So I think every business, business owner, uh, that's out there, every shop that's out there, um, they're also experiencing some type of shortages somewhere in their life. So they understand it. But maybe the, the person bringing the car in for repair just doesn't understand the process. So when it comes to ordering parts, when it comes to uh, that type of thing, um, you need to be communicating all the time with your customer. The, the more they hear from you, the more calm they're going to be about their repair and the more satisfied they're going to be. Leaving someone hanging out there in the in the weeds and not, you know, telling them where, you know, where they're at within the process um, is a problem. I know um, several shops have gone to a method where they have the car brought in. um, They blueprint it, make sure that they know everything without dismantling the car, um, give the vehicle back to the customer until they can make sure that they have all the parts there. Looking at uh, rental coverages today for most insurance policies, um, the parts situation is really important right now to make sure that you can have everything ready for the repair uh, so that the customer doesn't run out of uh, rental coverage before it's completed. Yeah, seriously, like odds are the customer doesn't know how to repair a vehicle, at least not to OEM standards. So that that's on you. The onus is on you. The responsibility is on you. And I don't mean to be scary when I say that. Um, but on a brighter note, referrals are also a great tool for customer retention, um, which ties into social media, something I find slips under the radar quite frequently for collision repair centers. Um, having a social media presence and encouraging customer reviews, just having a general line of communication open on a page. Tim, how have you found that to be with the Spinezy America social pages? I know you guys have a big presence there. Well, I, I think it's a very good idea to, first of all, have some, cust- uh, some uh, community awareness. Uh, so that the community out there knows that you're there, uh, whether you're working through your chamber of commerce or, um, you know, some, some other local method to be able to let people know that you're out there. And looking at the, the, you know, the venue of Facebook, there's a free area of space right there to where you can advertise your business, uh, where typically um, you were having to pay for advertising. Another way, um, focus on your shop, focus on the people within your facility, talk about the what is a proper repair, engage customers so that they know they may not be in an accident today. But as you said, when they're in an accident, they need to know they're coming to an expert. Um, and if we look at today's body shop and we look at the equipment that's in there and the investments that the shop owners have, have made, um, they need to be proud of what they're doing. Get out in the community, talk to the community, let them know uh, 
know exactly what their facility can do and is capable of. Mm-hmm. And even personally, I've there have been times where I'm scrolling through Facebook and someone's posted, I got a ding on my car. Anyone know a good body shop uh, or something's happened like that? Even just reviews for food places as well. Social media has a lot of uh, give and take there. There's a lot for you to reap rewards from if you just get involved. So a lot of people in regard to reviews might kind of just want to sit back, wait for the reviews to roll in. If someone has a good experience, yeah, they'll write a review. It'll pop up. Tim, what's your thoughts on this? Do you think people should be encouraging their customers to write reviews or just wait for them to roll in, good or bad? Oh, no, everyone needs to be asked uh, about their experience. Everyone needs to be documented, especially what if there is just that one mistake that was made and a customer is unhappy. That customer is going to talk to everyone and they're going to tell everyone about their bad experience. So you need to, you need to be able to take care of that up front. Um, and what better way to promote your business is with a happy customer. Um, again, as you said, if you start to look on Facebook, some of the Facebook communities that are out there for you know, what's happening in my town or, or whatever, I see it every day. What's a good body shop to go to? I was just in an accident. I've even coached some people on how to be able to settle their claim when they found out it was a total loss so that you know, they're protected from the powers of be that are out there that are trying to settle a claim and, and trying to maybe shortcut something. So I think it's very important to be out in the community with social media and just just out in the community, you know, for purpose. I have a not-for-profit um, that we we operate. We're out in the community all the time. Um, we even adopted some some of the roads in our in our town um, so that there would be some signage showing that we've adopted them, so people would know about us or want to go to our web page to be able to see more more about that. And I think body shops need to do the same. Every business needs to do the same. Let the community know that you're out there, help your community. And when you're doing that, you're going to see that um, it's going to come back to you. All that that you're doing is communicating, whether you feel it is or not. Exactly. And on the whole note of our conversation here, communication is such a simple idea, but it's a lot more than just talking, speaking back and forth. There might be times where you send a customer on their way and everything just seems perfect. They seem happy with their vehicle. Everything just seems dandy. They write a review and there's just that one tiny little thing that could have got you one more star to five stars. Wouldn't you wish that you knew that before they left a lot with their car and that experience was solidified in their brain? You probably wish that you knew that tiny tidbit of information. So it is important to um, ask customers, what's that one thing? I could do to improve your experience, even if it's after the fact and you find out that they might have had an unpleasant experience, they might have had a negative reaction or a negative experience. You can go to them and ask them, how can I fix this? How could I have made it better? Just so I know for next time. Thanks. Nobody's going to get mad at that. That's a perfectly fine thing to do. Well, I'll be honest, in in our business, you know, being in sales, um, I've even, you know, you obviously can't get 100% of every sale that's out there. Um, I've gone back to customers and said, what did I do wrong? How did we miss this opportunity? Um, what can we do better to maybe serve you in the future? I'm looking at reviews like that. Yeah. You have to, you have to be able to take them in, in, uh, you know, in context, be able to figure out how you can improve and move forward. If there is a bad review, you need to use it as a, as a learning experience. Um, hopefully there's not many of those to go around. All right, so throwing it back a little bit to our types of communication, our mediums of communication, rather, that we were talking about at the beginning of the podcast, some people in you know the days of instant messaging, when you can literally see when someone's typing, some people might consider email a dying or even a dead medium of communication. Tim, what would you say to that? Personally, I use email every day, but Tim, what are your thoughts? Well, I don't know if, I don't know if emails are totally dead, but people are trying to communicate more on an instant basis. I have found with our customer base. I, I am communicating more by text message or by direct message uh, than ever before. I think that emails are a good source to be able to send out an announcement of something maybe that your business is doing. I know some businesses that even have like a car wash Saturday or something where they, they communicate out that, hey, on such and such a day, um, you're a previous customer, drive by, we'll wash your car. Again, you're communicating with the customer, you're getting them to come back to see you, Um, While you're washing their car, maybe you're going to give them a tour of the facility or why not go live on Facebook um, or Instagram or something like that and be able to do a tour of your facility or or be able to just talk to the customer about what a proper repair is. Yeah, again, it's about finding the preference of the customer, how they want to be updated on their car. 
And you can actually ask them this. You can just say, hey, how do you want updates about your car? Do you want emails, phone calls, texts, fax, pigeon? Whatever they want, you can try to give it to them to make their experience the most uh, pleasant one possible. So on that note as well, uh, these don't have to be things that you determine on the fly. You can actually form a communication strategy. So Tim, how does one go about planning a communication strategy for their business? Well, I have to tell you when we when I when you talk about communication, I have a person that takes care of that full time for our company, and we spend a lot of time and effort working together to be able to find fine tune every medium that we're going through and trying to make them all connect. We try to make sure what we're doing on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever medium that we're using. Um, and now I'm hearing that maybe we need to start moving more towards TikTok. Um, but you want to try and connect everything back. And we've done some considerable different things with our, our website to be able to make that more attractive, to be able to make it uh, operate smoother. It has a chat session there to where you can go into chat with someone live um, during our business hours. You can get information. So I think that you need the, uh, the customer Body shops need to look at to get to their customer. Um, I need to steer them back to something, and we steer in our business back to our web page. I'm, but I'm always referring to someone who'll call and ask something. It's like, hey, do you have Facebook? Go over here and look at this. And then once they like you or like your page, now you're communicating with that customer. And a lot of times they don't even realize it because now you're going to pop up in their newsfeed. And when you start to look at uh, people today. Probably one of the first things they do is uh, in the morning is uh, before they check their emails, obviously, uh, is they go to their Facebook page, see what's going on with my friends, um, what's going on, you know, maybe in the industry, even with some of the industry things that they follow. So it's a good idea when you're looking at that, you also need to look at your customer. So you mentioned in there that Spinezy Americas uses a live chat. An up and coming form of technology is the infamous artificial intelligence chat that I'm sure everyone that's listening has dealt with at some point or another. Um, they can be quite frustrating. Other times, rarely, they seem to be helpful. But uh, what are your thoughts on this, Tim? What do you think about artificial intelligence, AI driven chats uh, for customer support? I would prefer a person to be on the other side, to be honest. Uh, just yesterday, Carl was working with uh, and one of our vendors that helps us with some of the stuff that we broadcast. And it seemed like they had a series of questions they needed to ask before they would elevate it to the person that could really help. Yeah. And the problem was our marketing person is far more advanced than the person asking the questions. Mm -hmm. So there was you know, a waste of time on the phone. And if you're in a chat and you're wasting, and I hear commercials uh, down here all the time where you're not listening to me, you're not listening to me. And I think that's the key is you need to be listening to your customer. And the, you can only do that if it's being done in real time instead of through artificial intelligence. The other thing that you could always do if you're trying to look at targeting someone or something is there's ways within your social media to be able to do that also. All right. So we're nearing the end of our podcast here. So I have to ask, uh, what's the golden rule per se for communication at Spinezy Americas? What's a rule that you try to abide by when communicating with your customers? I don't want to say that we have a golden rule of communication because we try all avenues, but we interact with every customer from our database with, uh, with emails, broadcasts. Um, we're constantly using our social media to try and reach out to you know, uh, potential new customers, existing customers. We're always trying to let them know what's going on within our business. Um, if you go back to the early pandemic uh, situation, I personally went live once every couple of weeks to let people know where we were at, that we were there to be able to help, that they could still get a hold of us. And also we put together a website to try and help shops to be able to work through trying to be able to get PPP money, different things like that, to be able to support their business when, when they were struggling. I'm constantly communicating. I have a group of shops that we communicate constantly through instant message, um, talking about different things in the industry. Um, we're always out at events. Again, that's communication, being at an event. I'm actually in Las Vegas right now at a, uh, at a paint company event. Um, for the 
past couple in the next couple of days to just make people aware that you know that we're there and what we can do to help. We communicate with our customer directly by phone through the tech support. Um, also, when um, when we do tech support with a customer at the end, they we there's a survey connected at the end. Uh, when they get an email of a resolution so that they can rate us on what we're doing. And I, I'll be honest, I look at that every, every Sunday morning. That's with my Sunday morning coffee is where did we hit and where did we miss? So on Monday morning, we can go back and, and go after it again. Yeah, it's not an easy project at all. Determining how you're going to communicate with your entire customer base. There are lots of moving parts. Uh, just communication in general and on-the-fly communication. Uh, it is a lot to handle, a lot to swallow. We've talked about a lot of topics here today, so try not to feel daunted by anything we've said. Don't be scared. Uh, just try to take it with a grain of salt and uh, be your best self. You're great. So, um, Tim, before we get into uh, the end of things here, I just have a last question. What's the number one aspect that collision centers should focus on first when it comes to working on communication with customers? I think one of the things that the shops today need to be is proactive. Uh, on a proper repair and communicating to their customer what an actual proper repair is and what their rights are to be able to receive that proper repair. It seems that there's some customers out there when they got car goes in for repair, uh, they're being directed to certain situations that probably are not correct for that for their vehicle. And so they need to be able to, I think, be proactive with their customers, let them know up front, if they know that there's going to be some struggles uh, for part situation, remind the customer that they're driving around in a, in a vehicle today, which is uh, has probably 25 to 31 computers on average in it. Um, and it is a high-tech vehicle. They need to realize the situation of the ADAS today uh, to make sure that you know the customer realizes what exactly is going into the repair. Take a windshield, for instance. I don't think people realize if you have a camera in your windshield, there's a possibility that camera needs to be recalibrated. So it's not that I can drop my car off in the morning anymore and be able to have that windshield put in and be able to pick it up in the afternoon, because now I need to have another technician be able to calibrate that camera system. Um, So there's several of those things that I think shop owners now should be really looking at explaining through their communications what is a proper repair and how high tech they are today in a repair um, so that they can be compensated for it and move them up to the next level. All right. So we won't take up any more of your time here, Tim. Uh, Thank you so much for chatting with us today. It's always a pleasure to have Spinezy Americas on with us and chat about all of your various wisdom in the industry. So thanks so much for chatting with us today. Okay. Have a great afternoon. And to all our listeners, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Industry Insider. Be sure to subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, SoundCloud, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Until next time, this is Allison Rogers. 